Before it was Paulina Katzenka. Thank you very much, Paulina, here with the blonde hair. Thank you very much. <laughs> and now we heard just now Lukas Löcker and Reinhard Zach. Woo! And this is also a good time to say thank you to Kike, Enrique Tomas, and Jule Del Rio, who are actually the curators of the Sound Campus. <laughs> Julia is here. <laughs> okay, and now at the Akademie der Gedanken, we are moving on. As uh, we are moving on in our schedule, I would like to invite Martin Nadal to come to the stage. Martin is also an interface culture student. Oh, no, I don't, I should not leave, okay. <laughs> I'm not allowed to walk <laughs> on the stage, okay. So Martin is an artist and creative, co creative coder based in Linz and actually now Berlin. Uh, and studying at Interface Cultures program at the University of Art Design here in Linz. In the past years, he has collaborated in a variety of projects and taught some workshops related to art and technology. He's also interested in illustration and cinematography. His works have been shown at Visualizar in Medele Prado, Madrid, Ice Electronica Linz, Amro Festival, and in Genova, at Yamas in Japan, ZKM, blah, blah, blah. <laughs> and now he has this talk, actually, I cannot say it. You have to say it in Latin. Yeah, I don't know how it says. It's like non nomen quod nie aurum est. It's, it's like it's is Latin. Okay, <laughs> I took French in school, so I don't know Latin. But the authenticity of the NFTs. So, it's your stage, Martin. Okay. Hello. Yeah. So, um, yeah, it's like uh, yeah. My name is Martin Nadal. I've been uh, in the last year working a lot with crypto uh, with cryptocurrencies and Bitcoin mainly with my colleague Cesar that is here. We develop like few projects and yeah and yeah and so on. So I've been like yeah I've been working as an artist for the last years and today I wanted to talk about NFT but we are going to do like a trip like what is an NFT, a not fungible token, no? so we are going to try to explain what is an NFT and then so we, we are going to, to explain like little hacks because now we are presented that, that NFT is something that we cannot discuss the, the, its authenticity. So what I'm going to try is to bring some sort of example so we have like a more critical view. It's like I prepare this for because critical data and to merge this so it's like I don't know, we are going to do this, it's an experiment, that's everything, no? So basically we are going to start talking about money. Money, you know, to something to be considered as, a money, as money, it has to be like a medium of exchange, measure of value, standard value, and a store of value. Basically, is uh, like medium of exchange is basically that, that you have certain amount of money and you can exchange it with another person. Measure of value, it's basically that that value is in some way stable also. A standard of value is that is widely accepted, so it's very related with the first point, and a store of value is that you can put your money somewhere and it will keep its value approximately during some sort of time. No? That is also can be translated in some proper, uh, properties, that is fungibility that we are going to talk about, that is uh, durability, divisibility, portability, cognizability, that is basically that it has to be identified, and scarcity. The ones that we are going to talk and how we are going to use the NFTs and the trip that we are going to do is like with these two characteristics. Fungibility, that, that's why it's like the NFT is meant non-fungible token, it's related with this property of money, and also scarcity, because if things are infinite, they don't have value, so these are like the two, and this is yeah, basically what it does. No? So we are going to, usually we talk a lot, and we do like, I've been doing like this timeline a lot of time, but today we are going to be very fast. No? So directly we are going to go to Bitcoin, that is, some sort of digital money that was created in 2009 by Satoshi Nakamoto. And the people that believe in Bitcoin, uh, they think that, that it also follows or they have the same properties of money. That is, can be like very discussed 
first of all, because, for example, uh, the value is moving a lot, so it's not a store of value. It's very difficult to store value. You, you really don't know. But they think that, you know, that they follow, that, that it has, like, all the properties, so we are going to give, like, okay, they do, no? And then the most important thing of Bitcoin is blockchain. That is, I think, like, the best definition of it is that it's a protocol of trust, a trust of protocol, no? And basically, what it means is that we can, we can, things can be certified, without a central authority, you know? Because, you know, all the transactions are in different blocks and the block is related to the previous one, so you cannot change one block without changing all the past, no? So that they, people say that is completely unhackable and till the moment it is, I think. And then we will go, we will go to programmable money that is like another layer, no? Now we have like money, we have digital money, they have, and then we have like programmable money. And like the most, uh, you know, we are going to, there are like alternatives, but the most important and the standard is Ethereum. Ethereum was invented by Vitalik Buterin. It's like the se second largest cryptocurrency platform in, by market capitalization. And it, it adds like the feature of a smart contract. And also it has like a virtual machine. So basically it's like money, but we can run code in it. So we can do like transfers. And this code is formalized in something that is called a smart contract. A smart contract is, is a concept that was introduced in the 90s by this guy, Nick Sasbo, that is one of the, f uh, yeah, that, and basically is like automatizing transactions between. So basically let's say that you want you have a smart contract that the first of each month it pays your rent, no? So a smart contract is going to do that and it's going to be awesome, no? The problem is that the smart contracts is that human relationships are very difficult to formalize. It's even impossible to formalize everything in code. So if I'm like running this smart contract that is paying my rent and suddenly one month for whatever reason I am an, I'm sick and I'm an, unable to pay the rent, then things, bad things would happen, no? So, but as a tool, it seems like pretty efficient, no? And also, vending machine is one of the of the examples. So basically, we have money and a layer that makes that we can run code to make different transactions, no? Also, in Ethereum, we have also some sort of a Bitcoin that is called Ether, that has like the they say that they have like the same properties of ma as money. But also, this, this uh, ether or this sort of, of currency is used to transfer value between, between users. I can buy things with it, but also it's going to fuel the execution of these smart contracts. The execution of, of these smart contracts, the, it has like a cost in energy. I'm not going to talk about it deeply today, but it's something that we have to, to be said. So basically, this is like the, the, the difference between these, these two cryptocurrencies. No? I know that we still haven't talked about NFT, but this is like some sort of introduction. No? So yeah, basically, as you can see in transaction, Bitcoin just is just to give, give money, and Ethereum you can put like different like random rules. And we are going to talk in art because we are like in a in an art academy or in an art university. We are going to talk about two about two ERCs that are proposals. How the how we would say like templates of smart contracts, no? and we have two, that is like ERC20, that is a cryptocurrency template, that is scarce, so it's not infinity, and also it's fungible, so there's no difference between the different tokens. So I can do projects related with my own money or stuff like that, and also ERC721, that is like crypto collectible template, that was the name two years ago, but now it's NFT. Just like what they say, and basically it's also scarce, but in this case it's not fungible, no? And we are going to put like an example. It's like this is something that that is here very close, and it's it's an exhibition that maybe you should visit because it's, it's here in Linz, and it's this project of Jonas Lund token, and this project is about uh, the artist made like a currency, and people that own the token can take decision about the, uh, his artistic career. And it's very funny how the, these tokens are earned, because for example, if you invite him to an exhibition, you will earn some tokens, or for example, if you buy some of his work. So I think it's like a very, uh, very nice way of, of understanding the money and art, no? And also, 
he has like a web page with different proposals and you can vote since you have your tokens you can vote what do you think how do you think the artist should be uh, should behave no i think this opens like an enormous discussion about financialization and so on also now we are going to run to erc721 that is uh, nfts an example and they also is here in the, in the museum i chose these two because they're like here in the museum so and it's crypto punks is like one uh, ten thousand unique characters and uh, even though that are prior to year c721 they mention it as the inspiration for it no basically are like all these little faces that you can buy and sell and usually the price increases madly but yeah they're like yeah like the reference is like the, the piece i would say is describes very well this kind of thing no? and now we are going to talk about uh, authenticity it's like it's, this is something that well, that i think is i don't know it's like for me what i'm trying to is to find the crack in the system no to find things that the authenticity if it has on, it, at least it has been debated no or put in doubt and the case one i'm going to talk about crypto punks the last work no this is like the the you know this project they are making lots of money because i think in nft i think all the conversation is about economical it's very very little is artistic maybe it's like zero zero one percent is artistic and mostly it's like the numbers of the artworks how you know how much money they are uh, is being made with it so yeah they are like making a lot of money and even like uh, Mr. Carter, for me, this was kind of shocking because Mr. Carter, that is uh, Jay Z, that is like a famous rapper, took his face and put it as an avatar in, in Twitter. And for me, it was kind of shocking that this guy that sa has like such a powerful image and he lives out of his images, decided to take like this avatar and to present himself into the social networks with this. No? So I, I did like some research of it and he's like, this guy has like, the, uh, Jay Z has like the crypto punk, Six six thousand ninety five. Uh, it's like normal. He made like a you know he I think he bought it for one hundred thousand euros. I don't know how much ether at that time. But then someday I was like also checking in Twitter and there was like you know uh, there was like these guys the creators of the crypto bank saying like no 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 there is like another project that are like crypto punks but are not really crypto punks you know they are exactly the same they should consider yeah but they are not the original and what the sentence that for me was like very very important is like this is in no way an authorized project remember that we are talking at least in nft we are like always being promised about decentralization there is no authority if you live in a decentralized situation so basically what happened is like there was like these people that they were like minting all the um, all the crypto punks but in, instead of ethereum in another blockchain that is called binance that is exactly the same but i think that instead of proof of work they have put proof of stake and it belongs to a company it has like the exactly the same web page and also it has exactly the same avatar but it's not jz's avatar it's another avatar that is in another blockchain it looks the same and for me these questions which one is the authentic no this is like one case this is like there's like another case and this is Beeple with damien hist and this is i don't know for the guys that 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 know is uh, he was a guy that was like going every day like 3d rendering and then someday he made like a huge image with all the images like 5000 days and made like this nft that till now is like the most expensive um, nft ever been sold that is uh, almost 70 million us dollars for me this this piece is interesting in from the perspective that is that is just referred to it as the most expensive and also in terms of accumulation no it's like the idea of a work of 10 years you put all together without any particular order and then you consider that it's like 5000 times better or i don't know for me that is what is intriguing of this work but there it is and someone paid the money and he is super happy and super rich i guess and so yeah so there was which is very nice 
well, and so this is how it looks, the artwork. You go to Rarivel or, or whatever, and you check, and it's true that the creator is Beeple, as you can see there in creator, and there's, it has been collected by this guy, Maker's Token V2, that, I don't know, is also someone that is trying to put like another marketplace of NFTs. No, but then something happened, and is that, I don't know, this slide is not working very well. Oh, it works. That something managed to find a hack in the ERC721 and managed to create two NFTs. Also, it would appear the creator that was Beeple in both. Is, uh, this is like OpenSea and the other one is Rarible. And I think that th this is very, but it's not the authentic, it's not the original. How much is the value of this token, no? So I think, you know, I think it's kind of, of interesting. This is like the second case. And what is even more interesting is like, even though that NFT relies their authenticity in the blockchain, at the end is the interface, what is more, in, more important because it's what we see, no? So the, these, these marketplaces, what they did suddenly, the token disappeared and we, they couldn't, yeah, fetch the token and it was, or the page was completely lost. But the truth is that there was like some sort of censorship. I think that also is very, very, interesting, no? It's like, at the end, it's not everything so decentralized. There are humans there, like, saying, like, no, 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 or yes, 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 yes. So, yeah, and also, like, this guy in NFF, that is, is the, he was going to release a tool that he was going to allow to copy all the, the NFTs, so we could republish with the, I didn't understand it because the, the web page was removed, like, last week, so I couldn't read more but basically he wanted to do Pandora's box that was, you know, this guy is like trying to break the market of, of NFTs and I think that is interesting. As an artist ap approach, I think it's, it's very nice. And also case three, that is like the closest one. I don't know if I'm okay with time, yeah? yeah. Okay. <laughs> Yeah, and it's like, a, I'm going to an example of Mario Klingerman. Mario Klingerman is, a, is an artist from Germany, generative art, that he has been pushing uh, NFT. He has been working with NFT, and he has been promoting a platform that is called ITET Nunc, that is a proof of state platform, so it doesn't waste so much, so much energy. And in some way, in the world of NFT, I think it's like the most healthy platform, I would say. But, well, yeah, so, Let's see, I don't know, my internet is not working very well today. Let's see. Two minutes more, cool. Okay, so um, there was like another hack again. This happens, no? it's like, like the authentic, you know, it's like blockchain, it's like they are like promising that things are not going to change, that are like going to be immutable in time and they're going to last forever as long as there is internet, I guess, or even further. But some, somebody f uh, make like a, um, a hack and was able to mint new artworks with the name of, of Mario Klingerman. No? Excuse me, that is internet. So basically, uh, this is like the original artwork. As you can see, there was like addition of five with a co collect, it was 500 tethos. And this guy managed to make like another series of 500, uh, a series of 500, selling it much, much cheaper. No? But be, what is interesting is what, that it was signed it as, the, as the previous case with the signature of the original artist. It, it's not cryptography, it's not that the true, but at least in the interface you could see that, no? So I was very interested in that, so I bought one of them and, uh, and start like analyzing the smart contract or at least in a block, you, blockchain is completely public so you can check wha what's going on, no? So this is how it looks, the artwork, no? And the artwork basically is an address where you can see the ar artwork and, and also a, a wallet that is the identity of the artist. And uh, yeah, sorry, it's because I don't know if it's loading or not, it's loading, so I'm going to talk a little bit slower. Much lower, I think. Well, basically, I'm going to tell. Basically, what I'm doing is like I bought the fake one and, and the original one, no? And I put both contracts one to another, comparing what what parts were had in common, no? So they had in common, obviously, like the image and also the the, the address of the of the creator. But also they had something very strange, an extra field, no? And then the extra field was nom one could need aurum est, and that means 
all that glitter is not gold. And I thought it was very beautiful. <laughs> yeah. And that, yeah, that's all. <laughs> Thank you very much, Martin. Uh, in the meanwhile, I would like to um, uh, invite Crypto Venus to come to the stage, and I would like to introduce you. Uh, for those who already uh, participated the last days, they know already we have this kind of nice booklet here with all the talks of all the participants from the last three days. So just grab one. We have all the abstracts inside and short abstracts and also the bios, short bios of the speakers and experts that we invited. And now we have here the Crypto Wiener. And they have on the website, we brought new life into iconic moments from the development of the crypto and blockchain scene and want to tell a story with them. This time the history of the blockchain is presented as funny connectables in our distinct pixel style. The viewer is challenged to interpret what is happening through our pixelated artworks. And on stage we have two from four, six persons who are actually the crypto winner and this is Julia Staudach Born 1984, a diploma, 2009 in digital arts at the, at the Angewandte in Wien. Founding member of the Crypto Wiener digital artist, NFT collector and community server. And then we have here Bernhard Lessler. He has a passion for new technologies and has been publishing digital art in the form of NFTs under the artist name Nisla since 2018. Looking forward to your works. Thank you, Manuela. Um, so we are talking about our Crypto Wiener project today. Um, short introduction of ourselves. Um, Want to start? Um, yeah, my name is Bernhard Nessler. I um, published my first uh, artwork as an NFT in uh, late 2018. So I think I was uh, pretty early in this space. Um, was also very lucky to um, get an invite to the platform Super Rare, where I issued my first NFT there. Um, and I was uh, exploring um, and playing around with pixels uh, the last years and especially in the beginning of uh, 2020 I played around with uh, simplifying shapes and um, creating abstract pixel art. Um, so um, the smallest uh, visible unit in the digital space is the pixel. Maybe you can see one pixel. Um, and I thought one pixel is a bit too small to uh, play around with it, so I uh, came with the idea of um, thinking about a pixel like a vector shape, uh, um, a vector cube, and um, yeah, playing around with the sizes and um, creating artworks that are like um, watching the clouds and uh, let your creativity uh, break through and um, explore the artworks and yeah, see uh, every time new things in, in these artworks. Um, for example, um, the first uh, artwork is um, a bull at a water hole, for me. Maybe for you it's something um, completely different. Um, the second image is for me an elephant. So um, some of my abstract uh, works are easily visible with uh, when I explain what I can see in, in them, um, but everyone will see um, something completely different. Um, some are also moving, I animated some of them, um, and then because we, are, we were talking about the loops of wisdom and um, doing research and uh, firing back our, our knowledge, um, the simplified artworks uh, also led me to, to, to make yeah, um, artworks with uh, more details, different shapes, shades, gray, grain, and uh, some smaller animations. So even my own ar artworks inspired me to do new art artworks, <laughs> which is a bit uh, funny for me. Um, yeah, then is, um, this is one work I call it Grand Punk because for me it has uh, about three faces. Um, it's one guy looking to the left, um, then also a guy with a cyber visor um, in his, uh, on his eyes, and I created this bitter 
out of this artwork. Um, Spitter is also a statement from last year where spitting in public became less welcome than the years before because of the pandemic. Um, yeah, and this is a collage of some abstract blocks, uh, artworks I created and stacked uh, together. And they also made some new artworks pop out of it. And while I was exploring, uh, simplifying and playing around with pixels, it was very cool for me to find the Crypto Wiener team because they were really excellent and geniuses at um, simplifying shapes and um, creating characters that you can recognize with just 32 by 32 pixels. So this is really a masterclass to um, yeah, create artworks in the pixel field. Okay, this is where I come from. Uh, it's, as already mentioned, I studied digital arts uh, in the Angewandte in Wien. Um, but I'm also a very analog artist because I'm writing a diary or journal since uh, 21 years now. And in early 2020, I started tokenizing excerpts of my diaries. So uh, bringing the analog back into the digital, uh, digital world. Um, I was one of the founding members of CryptoVina and our team was uh, getting together uh, almost twice a month just for having fun and uh, drinking and eating and uh, t discussing crypto and NFT collections. Um, can you switch it? This is uh, another um, example of how the digital world uh, influenced my diary writing and back. It's also some kind of a loop. Yeah, so we started um, minting the Wieners uh, exactly 666 days ago. This was our first uh, mint. Uh, does anyone recognize uh, this uh, person? Yes, very good. So we ba what we basically did is taking a person and um, minimalizing all the information you have down to 32, 32 by 32 pixels and bringing in all the characteristics and the fun and the story into a very minimalized pixel image. Here we have the transaction of our first mint. Maybe you want to say? Yeah, uh, this is a historic piece uh, for us because it was uh, 666 days ago that we first uh, minted the Mundel on the blockchain. And it also shows a gas price of two guai. I don't know if uh, someone of you is using the Ethereum blockchain, but the gas price of two guai would be really cool today. Um, and it cost us one dollar to issue our artworks on the blockchain. Today, because of the high, tra high transaction volume, it would cost about ninety dollars, I guess, um, to issue this uh, token. So yeah, this is also a uh, um, relict of the past. <laughs> Um, yeah, and how is it going? Um, one year later, we have about uh, 200 artworks. Yeah, one year after we um, launched our project last year, we have uh, 200 uh, crypto Venus later. And um, yeah, it's a pretty, pretty uh, bright and crowdy, um, um, yeah. Um, collection. Collection, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, each of them is hand drawn. The it's really a lot of work to uh, put into each Wiener and Wienerin. Uh, you might uh, recognize a few of them. Maybe some, someone knows the name. Do you recognize the one, uh, the crypto Wiener with the red background? Yes, yes, yes. Stefan Weber. Yeah. It's Good. the front singer from Tradi Weber. The thing is, we never really say it's really Stefan Weber because then we would have uh, maybe uh, law issues. We just say it, it, it reminds us uh, of him and that's how we stay clear from uh, legal problems. Um, do, you remember, do you remember the clown with um, the guns on, on his back? Enrico? Yep. Yes with his guns Mimi. And this is also s something from our childhood. We tried to yeah, immortalize um, memories from the Austrian culture and the especially the Viennese culture on the blockchain and create something like um, cave, uh, cave paintings um, because we were very early to yeah, issue our NFTs on, on the Ethereum blockchain. Some more examples. Um, 
m maybe you remember um, the guy who always said Knackenten, <laughs> who is no longer in the Child TV. Okay, so it, in total we have 200 uh, Venus minted now, that's uh, on the main contract. And uh, we already also started some side projects. For example, we minted uh, Austrian slang words and uh, Mundart, which we think is also worth um, putting on a blockchain because uh, kids today use a lot of um, English words and lol and uh, nice, nice additions, but the original Austrian words are slowly deceding, so this is uh, our attempt to rescue Austrian culture, to put it on the blockchain. Um, another thing we are doing, we are creating a, a world around our project. It's not only the Venus uh, on the Ethereum network, but also we got our hands on some crypto voxels plots. That's a metaverse which reminds a bit of uh, Second Life in its early stages. And we built a museum and a concert stage and um, the ferry wheel and some, some public places of Vienna. And uh, during the first lockdowns, we held huge parties with uh, people from all over the world and DJs. And I think we had 200 visitors or so on our first party. And we're also making variables to dress your avatars, which we sent to our communi community members so they can uh, run around holding a beer can or uh, even dress up as a tram, a Viennese uh, public transport vehicle. And yeah, that's actually a lot of fun. So you can see our project is mainly about having fun, spreading fun, and enjoying what we are doing. It's uh, yeah, basically a fun project, you could say. Yeah, these are some uh, um, impressions from our last party. Um, there you did, you saw me with uh, some of our variables like uh, Lieberkas Semmel or uh, 16er Blech. <laughs> um, we try to yeah, build up a whole universe around our project, not just the NFTs and the artworks on the blockchain, but also um, concert stage and the whole feeling um, and experience of um, knowing the Viennese people a bit better. Um, yeah, we also created some avatars for different metaverses and made them dance. Um, this is our, um, the first guy is Davey. Davey is one of our bigger collectors. Um, he's from the States and he doesn't even know what he's buying when he's buying some crypto wieners. So he's asking, what does Bam Euda mean? Because it's the caption of the artwork he bought. And we have to explain it with uh, hand and feet because it's not that easy to explain Bam Euda because uh, you can use it in very different um, situations. But it's very funny when they also start using um, Viennese words in our Discord chat, <laughs> sometimes on the wrong uh, place, but yeah, uh, s they still uh, use it and we have a lot of fun there. <coughs> yeah, community and social media is also very important, um, but um, the cool thing about blockchain, also mentioned today already, is that it's public. So data that it's public is not uh, worth um, to steal it. <laughs> and um, the big uh, data collector uh, social media platforms, I don't have to mention them, I think we all know them, um, are out of this space. So yeah, Twitter and Discord is very important and much more friendly platforms to discuss these topics. Yeah, especially what I wanted to add, community and social media it really is a thing that keeps this space growing. The artists are having a really vivid exchange and uh, giving them each other feedback and it's a nice growing community. So I think it really pays off to create a Twitter account and follow a few crypto artists and get into the loop because there's so much going on and happening, so many new projects coming out every day and there's something really big growing and it's still early. So artists can have their share and it gives artists a perfect uh, opportunity to not only create and share their art, but also really commercialize it and sell it. And this is a big leap because digital artists mm, didn't really have a very good platform up to now to really distribute their artworks and make some money out of it. And also uh, very interesting in the NFT and blockchain community is 
that you can easily collaborate with other artists or projects because everyone is happy to work together um, because we are all in on the same on the same uh, phase and um, yeah that's why we also have some collaborations with uh, for example Eatman. Eatman are some friends from um, from from the Netherlands, Netherlands and Belgium, um, which created the first uh, comic on the uh, Ethereum blockchain and made some um, action figures around it. And um, the first action figure you can see here is uh, Julie, um, and it was very interesting because Julie is a real person, so we know how Julie looks. Um, but with the second figure and the third figure, the second figure is our Shirley. Um, he was born as a pixel uh, character from Ross. And uh, yeah, we, we sent the pixel image to them and they created a 3D, uh, 3D human figure um, of Shirley. And we, we started to see Shirley the first time as a real person <laughs> now. Um, so yeah, it was a really um, cool experience for us too. Maybe cool to mention is that in the next step these will be printed out and then you can have a real action figure of me or surely or Marie Antoinette, which is really nice. <coughs> um, we also know that um, being a Viennese or Austrian German orientated project in this uh, big crypto field is not that um, not that good because no one understands what we are doing except a few people from Austria. I think these three guys back there <laughs> know what we are doing and no one else is. Um, no one uh, pays respect to what we do. We talk since uh, three years about NFTs all day to our, all our work colleagues. No one was interested since um, the big hype came and uh, people sold his first artwork for about $70 million because everyone had dollar signs in their eyes and wanted to do an NFT project. They came back to us and um, we then thought, okay, we also need some kind of international um, side project or, or line. Um, let's do something fun and use our cool uh, pixel style and issue and also immortalize um, historic moments from the blockchain history, but not just from the Ethereum blockchain history, from all blockchains. And then we started the Proof of History project, also um, with an art curator from uh, Switzerland together, um, which uh, tr brainstormed uh, with us about these ideas. And um, yeah, Proof of History will be um, on an exhibition starting tomorrow um, from the Institute, um, Institute in London and uh, will also be um, in an exhibition with um, Georg Buck next month. And you can see them in the Carolinum Franciscanum uh, Museum where we have our installation there. So yeah, also an interesting project. Um, a short overview about uh, NFT uh, trading platforms. Um, the biggest one is obviously um, OpenSea which behaves like um, eBay but for NFTs. Um, eBay also said that they want to sell NFTs, but I don't think that they will make it very soon. Um, there is another platform also mentioned, already mentioned today, Rarible, um, and the first bigger gallery, Super Rare, where you can find uh, really cool artists and NFTs. Um, if you want to jump into the metaverse, you can um, come uh, closer to the screens and scan this QR code. Uh, with your mobile phone. It should work very smooth today. Um, if you scan it, you jump into our MetaJump exhibition, which is um, in the Carolina Mu Museum today. Um, yeah. And you can also come to the table and uh, get one of our very rare handcrafted buttons. And while you explore the Metaverse, we also want to show you um, two of our music videos. We also made some rap videos. It I was a collaboration work. with an US uh, AR based artist and we sent him the lyrics and he made a wonderful video which then we developed into this uh, nice collection of impressions of metaverses, other NFT projects and it also tells a bit of the history of the past few months and years of what, what was going on in the blockchain. Uh, yeah, I think that's with this video, we want to end our talk. Thanks yes. for the invitation. It's yep. really nice being here. Very cool project. Mm. And 
enjoy the arts. Yeah, enjoy the music. Back from delirium, building smart contracts on Ethereum. Runners never asleep, cause the token runs deep. Pixel for pixel, building up our spaces. Climbing the block to different stages. Every Thursday with the whip me. Where we always in for retreat. Talks, props, and exhibitions with Matthew and Cody. Cause we game for the trophy. So up and up the curtains, cause we changing the game. It ain't ever gonna be the same, cause we do it with unity. This our NFT community, and we highlight like the furnace. Jumping together through the metaverses From Origin City to Decentraland To Somnia Space, we got it, man It's Sandbox, hold it down with the crew Cause there ain't nothing we can't do All the gang showing up, fresh wearables And yes, we all hella lyrical With collaborations everywhere So put your hands up in the air And say, fuck these, we do it anyway Cause our entities are the Bombay And dropping rhymes and token is our thing that's why we king of the ring. Mention the lines on chain. Now we do it with the F words. Yeah, you heard. So be assured, cause we got it all on our plate. Creating emotions as the chain faces from Nate. Selling out to the open sea. Exploring new projects. Always keeping an eye open for what's next. Cause with the wing, we bring the party to the crowd. And best believe we do it big, do it loud. Unstoppable art or chain. We come a long way. And just throw crypto wing here to stay. In the meanwhile, please come to the front, those who want to contribute also here to the round table. I would like to discuss a little bit also what we heard in the last days. And uh, thank you very much for your contribution. And please stay, please stay. I would also like to invite Ian from Thursday, uh, from the Critical Data Day, Martin Zeilinger come to the stage and also for those from the audience who would like to contribute something because maybe you also have experiences with working with blockchain or you already have an NFT project so please come to the stage and discuss with us. Um, Martin, Nadal coming here, Gerda Palmetshofer, where is Gerda? Ah, Gerda, come to the front. <laughs> Gerhard, do you also want to come? Are you coming? No. <laughs> who else? Cesar, exactly. I was assuming that you don't want to discuss this with us, so <laughs> the burden is to them now. But actually, I mean, we all heard about it, blockchain, NFTs, um, we don't understand it, or maybe you, we understand it, but we have to understand it better. It's a burden for the art, for, the, for, for our artistic uh, work, for our artists. Is it a challenge? Um, and I mean, also what we heard from Martin, I think it was very interesting to realizing that there is actually different blockchain channels, different possibilities. The question about transparency is a question in, in blockchain, the question of uh, fake and, uh, and actually um, um, intellectual property is a big question. Uh, so, who, yeah, now also having this wonderful presentation from you here, who wants to start with a reply or even with a question to some of the, uh, to the artists or to uh, some who was presented here? Martin. Martin, Cesar, Gerda. Super. I mean, I love this round table. Who else wants to join? Please come. Yeah, we have to discuss. Discussions are, I mean, presentations are wonderful, but discussions are better. So please come in. I have to get used to the mic again. Um, yeah, thanks for Martin. Re really fascinating uh, presentation and also the Crypto Venus for a really interesting presentation. I think I just want to um, um, throw in the ring. Um, maybe it's a provocation. Maybe maybe you all agree. I don't know. Uh, at some point, Martin, you said, and I think it was not meant quite seriously, something about how things that ha that are infinite have no value, right? And then how the blockchain or NFTs are meant to maybe fix that. And um, and um, so my provocation response to that would be to say that things that are infinite have 
a lot of value, have infinite value to me. Um, to me, that is one of the most um, interesting and worthwhile aspects of the digital as a medium in the first place. Um, so uh, maybe with that provocation, I'm already um, outing myself as uh, someone who's quite skeptical of uh, NFTs as a, as a store of value, uh, whatever value that might be. Um, and so anyways, that's, that's maybe my position to get started on that. I think things that are infinite have a lot of value and oftentimes have more value than, um, than if they're unique or um, scarce. In yeah, I agree. What, what I meant is that uh, things in the internet, when I mean about value, is, is because in all the discussions, I think that the conversation mostly is, is about economic value. It's like, it's like the starting point. It's like uh, uh, I feel that the conversation always starts in how much this was traded. It's like to reference an artwork. It's like, and this was, and also before when, yeah, it's like now when, when we did it, and also it's something that is so exponential that, that from at the beginning, uh, for example, you were saying before, no, it's, uh, we did it and it was like kind of cheap to mint. Now it's impossible to mint for the rest of us. So it's like a discourse that is very, is, is we have heard it a lot of time in the crypto world and it's the early adopter discourse and that's it. It's like, I don't know, with all the, I mean, so basically it's like, yeah, it's like uh, the economy is like how much of the conversation is is artistic and how much the, the conversation is purely economical. I don't know if someone wants to add something. Uh, yep, yeah. thank you. Uh, it's super interesting and it's also the point that I want. <laughs> the point that I also wanted to point out. No, so what is this? Um, um, difference no between art and art market no what is nft contributing in to to help artists no to keep back no the 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 possibility of commercialize their artworks no in certain points it was possible but in other hand uh, the big uh, salt was managed also for another um, 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 galleries or um, Christie's or there was an something behind, no? So um, is um, NFTs helping uh, artists to get back the economy? So how can NFTs support artists to be an artist? Because being an artist is something really complicated, no? It's you have to apply, you have to to, to work, to make your project, then you uh, get some exhibitions over there which sometimes are not really well paid. And um, how NFTs is the same or is adding layers of difficulty to the things that are already created? Yeah, I, I also want to add there, people with the $70 million sale is the best example. It's a guy who made um, every day a digital artwork for years and he just chained some Instagram followers and got some likes, but he can't pay rent or food with some likes on Instagram. And then with the NFT technology, he started, he could start to, to yeah, sell his works and not the, the works he does for companies where somewhere else sell, uh, t tells him what to create, but the works he creates w fr from, from yeah, his kind of view. So artists are empowered to, uh, through, through NFTs and uh, can start a living and uh, creating their own art, which was very hard before uh, blockchain and NFTs came. Uh, because another important thing is the realities, what the artist can get, because you can create an, an NFT, and if, it's, if, the, if the price increases after years and it got resold, then you will also get this percentage of the, of the resale. And that's also a very interesting thing for artists, because they really can make money with it. Before that time, before the blockchain, uh, uh, people that made visuals, for example, 
you have you had no chance to get money for this. You maybe got booked by a band and you can you could show it, but you could never sell it. And and this changed with the technology because digital artists were suddenly uh, able to to uh, sell their sell their art wherever they want to sell it. If I can pick up on that, um, I, I liked really your question, uh, Cesar. How can how can this technology help artists? And maybe I can rephrase the question. What I want to know is how can that technology help artists other than financially? Because if art is really just about making money, then that's too bad. Uh, then then I'm 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 all of a sudden a lot less interested in art than I was five minutes ago. And we all know that that's not what art is all about. But the rhetoric around this technology is almost exclusively about um, about that, and uh, to me personally, also the technology is mostly about that. It's about financializing creative expression. It's about financializing the processes involved in, uh, or or financializing the the communities that that exist around creative practice and sharing ideas and sharing creative work, um, and so that that can't be it, right? I mean, that, that, cannot, that cannot be the, the, the ends to yeah, which But it didn't start it like this, that was a progress, because when I remember the first days of NFTs, uh, it was not about money. Also with our project, we never really thought about uh, that we get maybe 20 euros for our Mundo. It was just the idea, we wanted to do it. And it was the whole community also, the crypto punks, we also know the developers. Uh, it was never meant to be to, to, to yeah. get to these heights. So, yeah, so I mean, in that sense, I'm curious about what everybody th thinks on this um, notion of what, how, how, you know, what is it other than financial um, issues that, that it helps us address. It's both, it's both. On the one hand side, it gives the artists first time uh, the, the chance to make money f without having a curator. And it's the community behind it that's really sucking in more and more people that would never have the idea to start their own projects. And it's a... Uh, as I, as I mentioned in our talk, it's a very fruitful community uh, helping and supporting each other and there's a lot of development and cooperations, new projects being started, a field that's being explored right now. It's uh, so much more than just monetizing digital images. It's, uh, it's, it's a new field of art that's just evolving right now, starting since a few years. It's a few hundred players being active there and I think the money is one thing, but what's what's happening every day and what's coming out of it is much bigger than that. And I think the money is a nice side effect, and it's really cool because it, it uh, democratizes the, the pr process of uh, selling and distribu distributing art. It takes it out of the hands of uh, uh, gallerists and, um, and some rich people and gives it back to people who can support each other and say I buy the things I like and this artist makes good stuff it doesn't have a name yet but I still want to support them and back to your first question about the infinity and the value I think what really is creating value is our behavior what we want what we like what we give value we give meaning and value to digital items it's us doing that it's not the market or capitalism it's what we think is valuable. And when I say, I want to have a cool, a nice status symbol, avatar, alien punk or whatever, and I can afford it, then this thought of wanting this avatar and paying that much is creating the value. Um, so uh, I'm not sure what to think about it, to be honest, yeah. I mean, um, on the one hand, um, I think it's there is underlying a contract as far as I've understood, yes. So um, then you are going to have some certificate, and the certifi certificate ends, correct? No. no, no. So it's everlasting. You're not creating an ephemeral. Um, okay. Mm -hmm. As long as the uh, underlying system exists, yeah. the platform okay. you use mm -hmm. to mint it or the mm -hmm. blockchain where yeah. you store the data, it mm -hmm. should be mm -hmm. like yeah, ca mm -hmm. cave paintings mm -hmm. yeah. will be long, more long lasting, mm -hmm. I think. Mm -hmm. I mean, uh, I will um, a, a little bit go with this argument that it's a kind of financialization because this kind of um, other 
core values which art might have been like beauty or um, <laughs> concept, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, is still a little bit missing for me. And um, concerning the contracts and blockchain, I think um, I'm always wondering, and this has not to act uh, now on this uh, project which you presented. Um, a contract is something society established um, between subjects. So my maybe uh, the subject is missing? Or do you have some contracts between subjects and objects? So, um, yeah. And the other thing is I'm not sure if we need some uh, simple counting in blockchain because for me, that uh, blockchain is um, nearly a database of accounting and nothing else. And maybe it's distributed, maybe it's decentralized, but uh, maybe it doesn't have any authority, but it's still um, an accounting, uh, accounting technology and nothing else. And um, maybe you could just reflect on those things and um, Tell me your opinion, and as I am the one who was um, uh, spontaneous, um, took up or something like that, Manu, <laughs> I will open the round to all of you and um, bring in immediately your uh, thinking about it, because uh, I think it's much more valuable to have your thoughts. Yeah. Hi, uh, thank you for doing the, the panel. Uh, my name is Andy. And I wanted to ask maybe two questions. Uh, the first one uh, relating to what you said about the people uh, transaction. Um, don't you have any worries that it's just like a fake trade? Because like, as you said, this guy was more or less a nobody. And now he sells like artwork for 17 million. Like it's just maybe to inflate the value of future sales or just to get headlines, like you can really doubt the authenticity in a way because you can um, send back the, the I don't know if it, if it was Ether or, or Bitcoin or whatever, you can like just send it back to whoever send it or like trade it in a circle in a way so you can, you cannot be sure that like real money exchanged hands. And the second question would be also for um, art, like there's no relationship between art and NFT. Like in a way, the NFT is just a, a unique URL under which you can see the art. So to claim you just do it for the art, it's maybe not true. Maybe you can reflect on, on that. Thank you. Um, yeah, of course. Um, the people sale could be a wash trade every art sale in the physical world could also be a wash trade. Um, it would be a bit more, a bit, bit harder to track back um, wash trades in the normal financial system we all use because no one can look it up publicly on, on the internet. Um, with uh, blockchain transactions, you can look it up. So if the artwork was sold by, by peoples, um, someone had to pay this amount of ether um, which was transferred to his wallet, received in his wallet. At this point he has to pay taxes for it. If it's a wash trade it would be a bit of, yeah, not that cheap wash trade <laughs> with this big amount of money. Um, and you can also track back um, later his ether transaction to some exchanges where he exchanged it for fiat. What which he did <laughs> um, before um, ETH mooned. So it was a very bad move from him. Um, yeah, that was the first um, answer. I hope um, it's a bit yeah, e easier to understand if you have a system where everyone can look up everything. It's a bit harder to cheat because everyone can uh, find, uh, find you cheating there. Um, and yeah, the second question with um, NFTs. NFT is something you can, you can imagine an NFT like a folder in the internet where y just you have the keys to access what was put into this folder. 
So it's very cool to have something on the internet, publicly visible for everyone, um, accessible 24-7, that still has value because um, not everyone can access all of the content which is stored inside this um, folder. And if you think about the younger, younger generations which uh, grew up um, with the iPhone and are always online and always on social media and um, flexing their profiles on Instagram and um, posing like they all are rich, famous people. If you look on Instagram, it's just a fake society. Um, you also see that the people care a lot about their online reputation. And with the game element of NFTs in a digital world, it, it gets uh, more and more important to create a profile um, and also express myself with NFTs, with the style of the NFTs I buy and I collect. For example, um, you can easily spot um, Ross with uh, his punks collection and his um, a bit uh, other um, views of, of the world and society. And then, for example, um, take some, some other um, crypto wallets which don't own NFTs. And you don't get a feeling for what personality is behind, of, behind this wallet. So NFTs will be a um, very important uh, part of the younger culture um, in the next years, I guess, because they already started to buy digital items for example, the free-to-play game Fortnite, where you can pay um, hundreds of dollars for a different uh, clothing skin, so that your character looks different in the game. You don't, you you can't play better, but you just look different. You don't have the free uh, outfit, and people paid millions um, for this kind of stuff. So you don't have to explain young people that a digital item has value. They already know it. The older people um, can't wrap around their head about the idea that a digital item has value. So, yeah, the generation shift will, um, yeah, I think, ease that out. Can I quickly also jump in and in response to, to the question? Um, first of all, about people. It's, uh, it's curious that we talk about people a lot. Somebody has looked at those 5,000 individual artworks closer, and many of them are incredibly racist and sexist and politically incorrect. He's not a good artist, and he's not uh, an artist worth talking about very much if we, are c if we care about the politics of an artist, I think. But it's a very interesting example about the, again, the financial aspects or dimensions of this. And you asked about, um, you know, the... the, the, the um, the veracity or the, the the integrity of the sale, and somebody looked closer at that as well, and it turns out that it wasn't a single person who bought the five thousand days. It was a kind of a conglomerate, and people has a not insignificant business stake in that conglomerate. So that there is a very problematic element of how that sale came to be. Um, and and to the second part of your question uh, around, um, you know the danger of fraud or theft or something we can't I we can't pretend to ourselves of course that the non-digital art market isn't full of fraud and theft and tax evasion right in fact the high stakes art market is absolutely full of that and um, um, it's a perfect vehicle for tax evasion and tax fraud and and so is the blockchain, so is the NFT in a way, right? Like it's just you don't need um, you don't need a free port anymore. Now your store of value that uh, that helps you save your bucks is, is is digital already. Anyway. Okay, very short. Uh, I, I'm the I'm the only one who's an urban researcher here. I'm the only one who doesn't understand cryptocurrency here, I guess. And may I ask you, can you uh, can we can we put up our hands? Who understands cryptocurrency? Or let's say cryptocurrency first. The second question will be blockchains. Who understands cryptocurrency here? No one does. No one does. <laughs> okay, who understands blockchains here? No. Okay, bit more. I think this is a central problem. 
I, we were, I was involved with the project with self-driving cars and the future of the city, and I, the first thing I did, this was five years ago, I said, we have to look into blockchains because, you know, co smart contracts and all of that are new, and we have to get into that. The TU, technically, we did not get into simply because we didn't understand the technology. And then there was a conference about governance, and they told me, yeah, the, the blockchain experts understand nothing about governance, and the governance experts understand nothing about blockchains. So that's the situation right now. Uh, but, but the way uh, we are conversing, or you are, con not me, <laughs> you are conversing, it's like half of the planet understands this. We don't. And let, we have to talk about how this is going to evolve. I'm so sorry, but I really want to give also the performers a chance. And I actually now have the, I think I have a good uh, last word. Because all of you, I mean, it's so important that we engage with it, yeah? That we start working with it, that we don't say, no, I don't know, so I don't touch it. I think it's very important that we understand it. And this is what you all did uh, on different levels, also with different uh, mindsets. And I think this is exactly so important what we have to do. and. Let's cut it off like this, because otherwise, uh, I mean, we have so nice performances here that we also want to see, and there is the power. Let's discuss also with people from the audience and move on with the discussion. But now we give the stage uh, to the performers again and to the artists, and I would very much hand over now again the stage also to Stefan Tiefengraber. And Stefan Tiefengraber, I think, already prepared. Yeah, but uh, an applause for our wonderful round table. Exactly, thank you. Nice discussion. Thank you very much. Thank you all. Thank you, Martin Zeilinger. Thank you, Ian Banerji. Thank you, Cesar Andalus. Thank you, Claudia, uh, Julia Staudach. Thank you, Bernhard Nessler. Thank you, um, Felix. Well, keep, we were just discussing. Krypto Wiener, Martin Nadal. Exactly, you just keep discussing here because I think also, and Gerda Palmetshofer, um, I only have to have a quick look to Kike. Uh, Stefan will perform from where? Okay, they can stay on the stage and can discuss further. No, they have to leave the stage. Okay. I'm sorry. So sorry. Please accept you have to leave. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you very much for this round table. And we hand over now to Stefan Tiefengraber and to the Sound Campus again. Thank you.